Most Singaporeans get their electricity from the grid. I get mine from the sun. I'm an outlier. Being right at the equator, sunny Singapore is ideally located to make use of solar power. However, as of 2011, there are only 36 households here with solar photovoltaic installations connected to the grid. Dr. Lau Chi Chong's household is one of them. Well, we first bought this piece of land here, I think about six to seven years ago. And then uh, we started to plan to build the house with my architect. <coughs> Of course, uh, we have. Uh, I, I had a very uh, sort of in mind. I wanted to do something that is really eco-friendly. So, solar panel is one of those things that uh, is very important in an eco-friendly home. Now, we've got a, a little bit of a museum here of different technologies, which is very useful to show. Um, the main type is crystalline silicon, and then you've got various thin films. This one here is about 90% of the market. So, almost all panels uh, these days are crystalline silicon. Um, it's also the most efficient. Then we have some fancy names, and they're called thin films, not because the module is any thinner, but because the active material is deposited as a very thin film on the back side of the sheet of glass. Now, this one is something the architects love to play with. This is a fully customized um, crystalline module. What can you customize? You can customize the distance between the cells, uh, in some cases, even the color of the cells, the size of the glass, the millimeter, the thickness, depending on the, on the load it needs to take and that really is for basically showing off some very nice pieces on, uh, for architectural impact. These customised modules make up half of Dr. Lau's roof, while the other half is made up of thin film panels. Unfortunately, in Sentosa, the building restriction is sort of a very uh, much towards an earthy look. Uh, it cannot be too uh, psychedelic, the rooftop cannot be shiny, it must be somewhat uh, greyish look or uh, sort of a brownish look. So we had to choose some solar panels that would go with that criteria. I think, uh, estimate that it generates about 20% to 25% of the electricity that we need. Uh, but bearing in mind that we don't use very much electricity in the sense that we don't use a lot of air conditioners. In fact, I try to minimize even the hot water usage. I tell my girls on a a uh, warm day, we should not be using hot water to bathe. For an average house like Dr. Lau's to be completely self-sufficient in electricity, they need a system that produces at least 1,000 kilowatt per month. How much would that cost? Uh, these days, around $35,000. So, half the price of a COE. <laughs> much better bargain, right? <laughs> The solar panels produce varying amounts of electricity, depending on the amount of sunlight available. So homes should still be hooked to the grid to have power at night. You consider using the grid maybe a little bit like a bank account. You pay into it and you draw out of it. Almost every day you'll have excess. So if you think about it, you're trying to make yourself energy zero or energy neutral with a 10 kilowatt system. Now at night, the sun doesn't shine. So they, and people using air conditioning at night are taking that entirely from the grid. So by definition, during the day, they must be um, exporting excess and the, the balance comes out at zero. So typically in the hours of 10 till about 2 in the afternoon, you are generating more than you consume at that time and selling it back to the grid, for which you get paid. When Dr. Lau had his solar panels installed over four years ago, he was told it would take him 25 years to break even. With the current utility tariff, Christoph estimates that it will take about 10 years for such a system to pay off, a vast improvement from the time Dr. Lau installed his system. You could always cut costs. Instead of using expensive looking tiles, which cost a lot of money, you could just use a simple steel roof and then you plong your solar panels on top. That would save some money, so that would reduce the initial outlay quite drastically. The other thing I think, if everybody would have solar panels, can you imagine the heat that comes to hit your roof is absorbed by these photovoltaic cells, converted into electricity, and that heat would be absorbed and not hitting your house or the environment. And also it gives you electricity to run your aircon or your refrigerators, and that would reduce the carbon emission. I think partly the reason why not many people are doing it because they have to put up a lump sum of money. It will help a lot if the government were to do something to subsidise this to increase the number of people using it. 
if you count money and uh, dollar and cents, of course it's not worth it. Yeah. But then over 25 years, if I can get back that money, I think it's definitely worth it. And now, especially if it's, uh, I think you can get back that sort of money in 10 years, I think people should start using it. And I hope the government will do something to incentivize Singaporeans and uh, everybody, homeowners in Singapore, to use it.